Hello, everyone, and welcome to the uh, MEC pod. We're back, refreshed. Uh, two people, uh, you know, kind of, you know, welcome back to the MEC pod. Glad that we could bring you back in for uh, the second half of MEC pod. Uh, gentlemen, where have you been? <laughs> well, well, thanks for having us back, Travis. We appreciate it. You know, it's the Travi uh, show. <laughs> you wanna, you wanna go first, Mac? I think yours is probably a little less exciting than mine. Um, you know, you wouldn't believe it. Oh. However, comma, oh. a pack of wolves <laughs> broke in. <laughs> I left the door open out of nowhere. <laughs> they come. They break through my bedroom door and drag me all the way out. But luckily, I'm recovering. Feeling a lot better. And uh, after this this past weekend's games, I, I think we got a lot to talk about. That's crazy, dude. I was just listening to Who Let the Dogs Out, too. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. Never mind. Not that crazy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was moving. I was literally packing boxes, uh, mm -hmm. packing stuff up. I, I drove. Well, I say I drove. Me and my partner drove uh, from Minnesota all the way to Southern California. So it's a 29-hour drive. We broke it up into three days, which is cool. Um, mm -hmm. Day one, we stopped. We did 13 hours. We stopped in Denver. Day two, we did Denver nice. to Las Vegas. So that was cool. We got to Vegas around like 630. Vegas? Uh, Vegas guy? Vegas. Vegas, Vegas was it, it's chill. It's I mean, like I'm not a big gambler or anything, but there's a lot of good right. food there. Yeah. Uh, and then Vegas to Southern California is like a four hour drive. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then we we literally I mean, today we're recording on what? 220, 2024. <laughs> we literally got in Southern California yesterday. <laughs> just like unpack got some korean pizza which is amazing uh, mm. definitely it. back I, in california yeah yep. that's yep. a california spicy, dish <laughs> spicy bulgogi pizza with sweet potato stuffed crust actually in bro front. that wow. sounds great i would never be able to get that on the east coast i'm gonna be free no, I, don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so um i don't even know if they have bun me's in the east coast i was talking to a friend of mine uh Yanni's like, what is a bun me? And I'm like, what? What Bro, is a bun? What is a bun? They, they, they are. What is a bun me? <laughs> it's so good. I'll let well, you yeah, elaborate. Yeah. yeah, they're they're so fire. They're the so sandwiches, fire. They're right? Like, the yeah. Yes. They're yes, Vietnamese. Yes, Vietnamese. Dude, v yes. Vietnamese. Yeah. Learning yeah, about the food word. that's served in <laughs> other states outside of North Carolina blows my mind. <laughs> no, they have a good. Uh, I don't know for sure if it's still open, but they used to have a spot in Chapel Hill. That had good ones. Oh. Take you notes. Just, they're really expensive in California. I know in other areas, uh, like when we were getting them, uh, in like some other places, like just in the other states we were in, like Salt Lake, Arizona, all that stuff, they're like considerably cheaper. California, definitely, unfortunately, just they're like 10 bucks a sandwich, unfortunately, which is like crazy, That's considering insane. like they used to be five, six bucks. Uh, back, back in then, the like, day, back, back in the in good the old day. days, could <laughs> get it for a nickel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I was like 19, when I was like 19, like what, eight years ago, nine years ago, something like that. Oh, uh, goodness. Like five, six months. Dude, I, um, I do want the, uh, I now kind of want a, a shibby picture for when uh, Orion was born. <laughs> <laughs> when was Orion born? He's like, what, 2000 something, right? Dude. Uh, 2005. He if he's, if he's 18. Dude, was I like an? Right? I was like a young emo kid when Orion was born. <laughs> like 06, I had, maybe? I, I had potentially oh, so probably oh five. Should be oh, probably oh five. I was yeah, I was fucking Naruto running or something. I don't know. Dude, I, <laughs> dude, I <laughs> like eleven. That was like back in the day. I was skateboarding. Uh, I had hair covering one eye. I had skinny <laughs> jeans that were way too tight. Like, you had the I love boobies wrist. Did you have I love boobies wrist? <laughs> did you have that? Yeah, I know yeah. you did. I had it. I know you did. Yeah, I had the bracelet. You had the the studded belt on. Studded, uh, yeah. Had my Vans. Classic. I had the lanyard. Yep. The have lanyard. a lanyard. <laughs> have at I least still like lanyard. I had like seven different colors of skinny jeans. Not even going to front. Like, I had everything that I could ever oh, want. But that's when colored skinny jeans were the thing, right? Like yeah. Like, maroon was a yeah. big color. Oh, yeah. Then. Maroon was the big one. Maroon was, like, maroon was I had, like, three pairs of maroon, and then I had, like, I also had, like, three pair of, like, gray skinny jeans. So. Yeah. Yeah. 
That was my like thing. Acid wash gray. Yeah. 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 See. See. Yep. Now that we've shown our age. <laughs> <laughs> Mac, what were you doing? Welcome. <laughs> yeah, Mac, what uh, were you I was doing? Watching, I was watching Thomas the Tank Engine. Oh, God, I feel old. <laughs> I'm old. I'm old. <laughs> all right, all right. Power Rangers. Power Rangers and Thomas the Tank Engine. We, which Power we, Rangers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, which one was it during that time? Period? Dino PD? Thunder. Dino, Dino Thunder, thank you very much. Dino Thunder. Ninja Storm. Dino. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah, I didn't watch it. Mine was an OG. Okay. OG, Mighty SPD. Morphin. Yeah, Mighty Morphin. SPD was after... Uh, was... You're thinking... Are you thinking of... Uh, oh, gosh. Is it like Neo or something? Was the one after Mighty Morphin? That's Matrix. That's... Neo. <laughs> Guys, I'm not... Don't mess... It. I know my Power Rangers. As he's don't typing away furiously. Dude, don't Power get it twisted. Come on. It's Neo. <laughs> This is, Yo, this is, yeah, this is our way weird. of hinting that the MEC pod is just going to turn into, like, a nostalgia pod after MEC yeah, finishes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, I we, we, we've we shown our age. Anyway. We have wedded the viewer's appetite. we got to go ahead and talk oh, about... Zio. My bad. Zio. <laughs> Let's that go. Desperately needed to know. Let's let's get <laughs> let's get into the things. We had a lot of time from where we had last taught. Uh, MEC clash had happened. We all worked on that event. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there was also a exciting weekend full of games. So let's go ahead and just real quickly. We touched on a little bit in MEC episode two point five and three quarters. Uh, we got our Kingdom Hearts <laughs> reference put into that one. Uh, let's go ahead and real quick touch on it. How did you guys feel with the event and everything? We didn't have any, like, MEC standings, no prize or anything like that. I know that uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure all three of us kind of have a very similar opinion in regards to it, where <laughs> we wanted something there, <laughs> but... That, that's one way to put it, yeah. Um, don't host a competition for competitors if you have nothing to compete for. I'm just... I'm going to throw that out there. Like, why would you want teams and players to reveal strategies at a tournament that quite literally means nothing i i don't understand yeah. right like i get why i mean i get why we're hosting it right it's for the mec it's a it's a it's a cool thing to do yeah I, i'm not gonna say no to a land i will never say no to a land right you Answer get to meet no. people yeah you get to play cool games the side tournaments all that stuff but realistically the big draw of lands is that there are stage jitters, there are playing in front of an audience, and there's something worth playing for. If you take those key elements out, the LAN is just realistically a very fancy... It loses some flavor. It's just a, it's just like a really fancy, nerdy farmer's market. Like, really. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. That's what it is. That's what it is. Nerdy farmer's market. Hey, you want to come That's over good. to my land, the nerd market? <laughs> Dude, yeah. Like, okay, tell me there's not, like, I vendors got side selling events. stuff. Yeah, yeah, they got side events. And, like, that's the thing. Exactly. Farmer's market have cool stuff, too. I mean, depending on the one you go to. I'm just, that's all I'm saying, right? Like, I get why, like, other people would be upset that, like, for example, GVU was, like, just roster shuffling all around. Mm -hmm. Purdue Northwest obviously had, like, their coach coming in ottawa couldn't even play but like you take you take the most important thing out of competition and for one of the most important things i don't think you can expect anybody to take it seriously expect especially when it only harms the top teams and benefits the lower seeded teams i i thought it was good vibes i think i'm actually res maybe partially responsible for uh jinxing uh, the the event halfway through, we we're like, man, this is oh, going no. great. This is not like any land we've ever experienced before. Nothing catastrophic has gone wrong. Oh. What could happen? And then everyone starts losing access to the riot I client. <laughs> For the whitelist, I was waiting for the whitelist or uh, bl getting blacklisted because you didn't whitelist with Riot. Oh, uh, that was great. That that, that I, I, I kind of I accept some of the responsibility <laughs> in that sort of transpiring. Um, 
I got I I'll, I'll you know MEC Paul will will voice our opinions on here. Yeah. Take it as you know with a grain of salt. We're just a couple yeah, guys here, but MEC. I agree. But I agree with what Shibby was saying in terms of um, you kind of you know what we saw on the rift with the role swaps and stuff. I think that's what you kind of get, and I think we did honestly hear from some of the sentiment from the players that like yeah we don't want to reveal anything. We have these. Like, it didn't count for the season standings at all. Mm. So, when you kind of take that away. So, yeah. but that's a con of the... I think there's pros and cons that come with it. A huge yeah. pro in, in what we saw over this past weekend during my interview with Raymond. He was listing off, like, five, ten players that he met with. And he... Mm -hmm. You know that meme where it's, like, the guy getting interviewed and he's like, that dude, dog, this guy dog he that guy he's a dog too it was just raymond like listing a bunch of players of like these guys were really cool and made the experience really valuable so i do yeah. think that element of being in person i mean i was at university when covid happened and being remote for a year and a half mm. and being <laughs> separated from mm. everybody definitely kind of leaves it mark and i think within our sort of current esports ecosystem a lot of those events are online for the most part and so those moments where we're able to come together as a community i think are really special so uh mec clash pretty solid i've had a great time casting it you yeah. know i think um it was a good time and um for actually some of the teams that um you know i think it's challenging in the college world for esports at least right now for players to like consistently practice and find that time you have classes you have exams you have other priorities yeah and so i think it was a great also opportunity for teams to just get some practice and get some games in together we saw a surprising amount of close games <laughs> that were like 30 plus minutes and that was really i mean we got experience so like getting back Chow. into right <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I, I thought that was, at least for the players, a great experience for them to, uh, yeah. to have. And just kind of the piggyback off of it, uh, I, I think it's really cool for, like, parents and, like, family members to kind of yeah. get to see, yeah. like, what you're doing, to It's, it's, it's cool to be like, hey, if you watch here, you can see me. We have this whole broadcast going on, mm -hmm. but it's cool for the parents to actually be able to go out. I know a lot of them did actually show up. The players had a lot of fun. Um, I, I, I mimic a lot of what Shibby had said about the prizing. Like, I wish that there was, uh, some sort of prize. I get the idea of, uh, and I, from what I had heard, the players also requested for it not to count towards MEC points as well. Mm -hmm. But I get the idea behind that because of the fact that, like, travel can be a weird thing. Um, uh, it would have been weird to bring in a team like Campbellsville and be like, this is for MEC standing points. Mm -hmm. um it, there's a lot of like different things yeah. that it closes your door to i do hope that they look at this and they grow from it and say all right let's get some sort of a prize together even if it's just like a plushie right like just like a something like simple to be like i won this uh mm -hmm. it's just a cool thing to be able to do so i hope that there is a they they take this and they learn from it i think it's cool that they got to have a very fun event uh i want the events to be fun i do agree with the idea of they should not be uh like mandatory for like mec points just because of like how often has it been where we've had like a team couldn't make it or a substitute happened uh i even heard the rumors that they like two of the teams were like looking to come together and make one super team together uh because they just <laughs> didn't that. have all their members <laughs> yeah they were gonna do the fusion yeah, it would have been a wild fusion it would have been a wild fu i think we can say it right there's no way we can no no it's fine yeah. it was like what yeah. purdue yeah, northwest yeah. and ottawa right it was Purdue, Northwest, and Ottawa. Yeah, that would have been the combined team, which would have been wild. And it would have been, like, <laughs> a mixed roster, right? So, like, yeah. one one team, one version of it we could have seen would have been, like, Prod in the Jungle, maybe, like, Blonder, Riverside in mid, and, like, the rest of Purdue, Northwest. And, like, another combo would have been, God, like, that's Doubtful, crazy. <laughs> another combo would have been, like, Killian, Doubtful, Klexo, Levi, and Plux. Can you imagine going against that team? <laughs> that's actually pretty insane. That's a super team. That's a fucking team bro that is a team 
but like that's that's a super like, team. I, that's that's a team. Like no offense, obviously the other players, but yeah. like, with those two teams, you yeah yeah. That's like that would have been because it would have been like I think I know two players I believe from Ottawa could make it. Obviously one from Purdue mm-hmm. Northwest. So there would have been at least eight players to draw from. So you would have yeah. had like two three different <laughs> rosters of five man lineups that could have just destroyed it's it's your team. nuts because it's also like you're you're talking about is it, like. Uh, with all these teams together with all their might combined right like it the, all the players you just listed are like people that are vying for like top three inside of mec right so it's like mm-hmm. it's insane and is that a is that a segue maybe into uh this past weekend's uh past weekend's action travi as a uh... Top three in MEC right now is looking a little spicy. <laughs> uh, yeah, you notice that we didn't say one of the teams there inside of it when we were talking about Super Team. Uh, Ohio Northern, I feel like we have to go ahead and touch on it. Big weekend for them. Uh, I Huge. went into Sunday with like, all right, this is going to be the the big test for Ohio Northern. They have been getting yep. called out. I've even been a critic of theirs. Their first games have looked <laughs> terrible. Uh, inside a series. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, You've been saying that. And it's been... I have been a critic, even though I am a fan of the players and what mm-hmm. they have. I have been a critic of them. And a lot of things... Your strength of schedule. What is it looking like? I had a graphic mm-hmm. shown on the very beginning of <laughs> Sunday actually showing what their strength of schedule was. Just to kind of be like, this is a valid point. Mm-hmm. And then they came out and they 2 0 GVU with a sub. And it wasn't just, like, any other sub. It was Cuz who was subbed out, a vital member mm-hmm. of the team who was, like, constantly moving around with Kai, who was an integral part of that team's, like, mid to late and also yeah. helps out Julian inside the jungle. Like, I, I was just, like, I was flabbergasted. Uh, I had the standing set up. I was pacing mid-cast <laughs> in between fights, dude. Like, Hyper was laughing at me because I'm just sitting here, like, going back and forth in my room with, like, my extension cable in and everything so yeah, that way I could move yeah. around. I'm, like, losing it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Shibby, did you get it? I, I watched yeah, I, the replay earlier today, and yeah, my mind to, was I, blown <laughs> over I, I, the series. <laughs> Yeah, I just want to like shout out O and U for playing the like the like we'll talk about it obviously, but the back to back games is mm-hmm. kind of crazy, yeah. right? Like, I don't know if everybody understands this. Like O and U just literally that same day, they played GVU and they played Drury right after. Did they was there? I don't think there was a like a big break between no. the games. Right? No, it was a, it, it was, was it was like a five minute break. Or like, it was a five minute yeah, break after a, the interview. Mm-hmm. It was like a five minute break, and I was just like really impressed. Uh, I think with just like ONU's, I wasn't like okay, like impressed is maybe uh, not the like the best word, but I was like really surprised at the drafting that I saw from ONU and GVU, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and the play think, too, right? Like they just yeah, played yeah, yeah, yeah. really yeah. well. Like the mental fortitude to do that is insane. Well, it's 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 interesting because like Proctor to me for GVU, uh, we can talk about the GVU side first. Mm-hmm. He, in my mind, is just like an Orn Udier player. Like that's all he plays. And Kasante, right? and like Kasante as well, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Kasante, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And Kasante. So like, <clears throat> the the intro I got to Strict Proctor, and that me and Mac got to Strict Proctor was this dude just like walked in, like day one or day two, <laughs> level one, just walks in as Udier top and kills like I believe it was CSU or BCU's jungler mm-hmm. in their own jungle. It was a Vi. And I was like, yep. okay, this guy is just insane. Like yeah. not insane, and just like. <laughs> As a player, but he's just like, yeah, I, I, I know what I can do with Udyr. Like, that yeah. is, like, really, like, good Udyr play. Like, you know you have lane prio. You know you can shove in. Like, this jungler either has to path away from top or he's liable to just getting invaded, right? So, like, he understands Udyr, the fundamentals and stuff. But, like, yeah, I'm surprised that, like, GVU didn't ban out Nar, which is, like, a really big, good matchup into most of Proctor's, you know, champions, right? Yeah. Like Kasante, we see Nar picked a lot in pro play. Uh, we see the Nar into the Udyr quite a bit, right? Mm-hmm. Even the Orn occasionally. Like, you'll just see the Nar because it's just so good at kiting out. The boomerang is so insane. I'm surprised they kind of just let, let Aggression have that game one. Mm-hmm. They banned, like, Smolder. They banned Darius, Varus, Akali. Silas. Kai's been spamming they Smolder, took... so I, I get that, yeah. too. Yeah, and they took out two of um, Kato's champions. But, like... Not the Silas. I, I don't... <laughs> yeah, I... 
I don't know if I'm necessarily afraid of the Varus here. I feel like if you are just going to Lucian Nami, Lucian Milio, you can just, like, let them have Varus plus Nautilus or Varus plus, I mean, Nami or Milio if they decide to pick it away, right? That mm -hmm. kind of stuff. I don't, I, I'll take that over giving aggression his gnar into strict proctor right mm -hmm. um not that it was like a crazy thing right necessarily yeah. like the people yeah. that popped off were kato the people that you know what i mean like in game one but like it's not like aggression didn't do anything i think it was like four zero five on the it was NAR, four like zero five 5 on the first yeah. game i think yeah mm -hmm. game one and i'm just like well now you're kind of like don't have a winning top yeah nightstar is doing really good but mm -hmm. like you're, you don't really have that front line for your double 80 carries to really kind of shine. And game one was kind of close, right? Like at the end, I thought GVU was going to win at that like last push mm -hmm. where like Knight starts doing wolves and they're pushing down mid. But then, yeah, just Owen, you kind of came in and, and, and Kato got like a massive scoop on the tier two mid lane. I was I was very impressed game mm -hmm. one uh, with Owen use play and just like what GVU was uh, prioring there. And I was a little confused. I'll I'll say it. I kind of thought GVU through game one. <laughs> I, I agree. There was two, it was two dragons to one. And we're like 22, 23 minutes into the game. And GVU, it was a, it was a close call. And unfortunately it was, it ended up being the wrong kind of call to make, but they, they tried to rush dragon to meet ONU at Baron. And ONU is able to quickly get Baron and escape. And from there on, it was, I think, really hard to stop GBU or ONU's push. They had what, game one? Mm -hmm. It was, I think, Azir Caitlin, was it not? Uh, uh, they had game Corky. one. They had Corky game one. Let me look. I think it was yeah. Corky Azir. ONU had, ONU had, yeah. Corky versus it was Corky versus Azir. It was yeah. Kato. Azir so they had a uh, they had Kato's Azir, yeah. which had a crazy two v one outplay yeah. in the yes. mid lane. Travi, I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, I that remember. was nuts. <laughs> I, trust me, I I Monday I woke up, I was just like, yeah, oh what a good day, and I was like, what happened to my voice? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, it was okay. So it wasn't Caitlyn. It was Kai on Aphilios. Yes. So Azir. Aphelios pushing with Baron down the mid lane, I think, was just a tough spot to kind of get into. Um, and they tried and the flank, Castle, too. Castle kind of inted. Yeah, they, Castle <laughs> tried the flank. He tried to go for, like, a Dragon Rage kick. He wanted to insect yeah. Kai yeah. into the, the team. I saw the video. Yeah. I saw what Castle... So I saw what he was trying to do. And, like, that's kind of the only play you have, right? Mm -hmm. Because, like, a zero Aphelios scaling is just insane. Like, yeah, Corky can pump out the damage, but, like, you really have to kick one of those two into your team. But, like, yeah, yeah. Like, like you're saying, Mac, uh, bit of an in. If it, if it works there, he's a genius. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he right. would have gone down yeah. in history. Yeah. If it the, worked, uh, the, victor, the victor writes the story. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty, yeah. Much, pretty much. It's yeah. so – it was it – was, and, and, like you said, the game one did feel like it was a throw, too, because, like, GVU were in a good position for, like, a majority mm -hmm. of it. Like, they were dictating how the fights went. And yeah. I even, on broadcast, turned around and said, like, dude, I'm worried because Ohio Northern, every fight that they're winning, they're not starting. And that's actually yeah. worrisome to me because that means when you do start the fight, are you going to lose that because you're going to be the one out of position? And then they just, like... The flank happens, as you talked about with that lease in. Mm -hmm. Could have been a genius, but ended up not having it. The first thought I had in my head was him talking about, like, I asked him about the new patch coming up, if there was anything he was interested in. He's like, did Lee Sin get buffed? No, I'm not interested. <laughs> and then I was just like, oh, man, he picked Lee Sin here. And, oh, that, that, well, that, that didn't turn out very well here. Didn't have an mm -hmm. angle. It was a good game. It was a good series all around. And Such, then, I think, best series of the season. 100%. So far. Right? 100%. And then in game two, there were moments where I, like, paused the VOD, and I'm <laughs> like, at this point in the fight, I expect GVU to win because they were getting such good engages. Castle looked great on the rail. And then there was, I, I think, a few moments, and even in game number one, there was some slight desync from GVU, I'll say a little bit, where mm -hmm. there were some late pieces. A few They saw their moments of opportunity, they tried to grab it, and then 
Um, I, I think some of the carries from Owen, you just really came through Kato with the great series. Kai, really solid positioning. And that was uh, the, the team fights were just so good. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's so rough to play Rel into Caitlyn, too. I feel like you can just never get that engage off. Mm -hmm. Right. And then, like, also into Silas. Yeah, like Silas, all he wants to do is. He was still in a zero. He'll he'll steer a zero. He'll steal a zero or he'll steal Rel ult. And he just wants to be in your face. He loves it when you're in his face. So, like, yeah, um, I get I get why they banned the Silas in game two or game one from GVU. Um, I'm kind of surprised that, like, uh, GVU just, like, usually they play the fight so well. Right. Like the team, like, even if they do fall behind, like, a thousand gold Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. They always like clutch it up the team fight, and they had like poke Varus. They just weren't able to get a lot of that poke down before some of the objectives, which mm-hmm. I was surprised. Right? Like, there's one to two ways I think, in my opinion, to play that kind of play style of poke Varus and like long range Azir's. Like, you either let the enemy team come to the objective first, and you kind of just try to shoot them down. Did he while, play like, poke? Tackling provision with your front line. Yeah, uh, it was lethality. Okay, yeah, I was, was trying lethality. to remember if that was the on hit. Var- there was an on hit Varus mm-hmm. game, I think, earlier it on. Was- yeah, it was it was lethality Varus. So like you either let them kind of come to the objective first and then like fish in a barrel them, or you gain gain a bunch of control with your double tank line with like Rel Cassante and you just you just play the the, the dance game, right? Like dance mm-hmm. monkey dance and you just <laughs> you just land <laughs> arrows consistently, right? Onto Kai, onto Kato, right? Because the realistically the way ONU wins those fights is like if you overcommit and you like kind of fail to hit the right people, or like Xin Zhao gets a, a really good, like, um, isolation, right, with a knockup. Or, like, Nar gets a big ultimate, right? Or, like, let's say, in this case, Kato would steal a zero alt and flank. Like, that's kind of how ONU wins the fights, where I felt like I felt like GVU just, like, didn't know how to play with their poke Varus. It looked very... Like, I, I think desync's the right word, Mac, but it also just looked awkward. Mm-hmm. Well, it's also, I, I and I want to bring it up, too. There's an interesting mechanism that gets thrown in there. The Pike did not get to have a great game inside of game number two. Uh, mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Uh, the it, Pike's a weird character. It's one of my favorite characters to play. I love playing him in lane. After I get out of the laning phase, man, I hate it. I, I it's suffering because it's like you're constantly like on the edge of fights just trying to throw out your skewer and looking for like that ideal moment to go in and just pop off a chain reaction of kills yeah and there were so yep. many times where they tried to do that but ohio mm-hmm. northern were so good at like spacing out at yep. the moment yep. where they got low like that that the pike got zero value and mm-hmm. uh, we talked about some of the heroes in there we didn't touch on who i thought the biggest hero game number two was tango the substitute support coming in playing thresh <laughs> they're most played you were talking about how annoying it is for caitlin to mm-hmm. into to rail right bro rail hates thresh like every single time castle tried to go in there was an expert flay, flay that came in the right time it's their most played champion by far those death sentences were on point every single hook just felt like they were hidden and tango was just on fire on hook champions throughout the day in general but game number two for me it was really the the tango and kaido show with the silas mm-hmm. coming in and mm-hmm. i was just like yo wait why did they give kaido silas hello <laughs> it was just constantly i was i was impressed there with um some of the ultimate usage there from kaido uh, as you mentioned really clutch sealing the azir wall i think most commonly and make it really good use out of that he even stole the uh, Kisante ult at one point in time and went all out on the Varus in one fight. And I was just like, that's funny. That's very funny to take the one champion that can do the damage inside it. Because Nightstar was fed. Like, Nightstar was actually, like, yeah. like trying to carry out his team. Trying. He was trying. It was so funny, too, because in Twitch chat, like, beforehand, he was actually, like, typing up, like, good luck, GVU. I hope you win. <laughs> and I was just like, man, you should have prayed a little harder, bro. Like, it was, it was... It was good, but it, it it's all credit to Ohio Northern, and they're the team that they're, the players feel like they're slept on. And I feel like mm-hmm. that should be a big slap. And before we start talking about things outside of it, uh, Shibi, you already uh, touched on it. The double header going against Drury immediately after, who is no slouch. They're kind of in the middle of the MEC, but we've seen them have close game ones against every single team in the conference that they've lost against, right? Like, their game ones mm-hmm. against GVU could have easily gone their way uh, if they actually mm-hmm. got to execute correctly. 
So, I mean, then having like a, a series go to distance against Drury was also a very, very insane series. But I don't know about the series going the distance for Drury. Game one went the distance. Game one <laughs> is insane that ONU actually won that, right? They give karma away. We see a twisted fate, AD twisted fate from Quick Slice, right? <laughs> pulling out the broken blade i was like okay this guy is like on something <laughs> wukong for kaiser like i really loved drury's composition and that's it's so insane that they lost on that because like if you look at the box score right if you look at like what it is it's like oh 18 to 12 63 000 gold like for drury 58 000 <laughs> ohio northern has like you know that was the game like they won that was game two you're talking about game number two Am I talking? Yeah, because because uh, Quick Slice didn't play uh, TF until uh, game yeah, number two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah you're yeah, in game yeah. two. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So they won yeah, that yeah, game, sorry. but it was a comeback was victory too because moving. Twisted Bro Quick Slice got dunked on inside a lane though. Like he was zero and four in lane against a Nar. Got solo killed three times. My bad. Yeah, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Sorry, I'm thinking of game three. I'm thinking. Of yeah, game you're thinking three. of game three because because yeah. Quick Slice cleaned things up. He was just like, all right, I'm I'm feeling good. I got things, and then like. There was, like, one fight that happened, and I was really confused. I was like, what just happened? What <laughs> what happened in the fight? Because it was a fight at Baron, and it was, like, uh, Leona just, like... No, it wasn't even Leona. It was just, like, one member of the team was just, like, in front of everybody, and was just, like, everybody else dispersed. It was a fight happening off screen, just, like, around <laughs> the edges of Baron. And, like, Ohio Northern aced, and I was like, sure. Sure, cool. That's how did that happen? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Game game two is what I was saying, but yeah, game two, uh, like giving. It's weird because also Ohio Northern were just okay giving the karma away again. Yeah. Right? Like, I'm so su I'm so surprised that they were willing to give the TF and karma away to Drury a third time, and like they just chalked it up to like, yeah, we just executed badly. Like that that's like essentially what they're in my opinion, when you like give some of those same champions away, you're not blaming the draft necessarily. The you're players blaming are just the like play. blaming themselves. Yeah, bla players mm -hmm. are just probably telling themselves like, Oh, if we play that like better mm -hmm. at this point in the game or we play that slightly better, we win that. Like it's not karma the issue. TF was not necessarily the issue. And like mm -hmm. they came back and, and, and game three. In a big way. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Twenty three minute or twenty four minute victory, something like yeah. that, right? Like it was insane. Like you mentioned, like Kai and Tango just Having a, a Billy Bonkers Oh, Blitzcrank game. game three, right? Yeah, Blitzcrank yeah, was yeah, game yeah, three. Yeah, he yeah. did not miss. He did not miss he a was single so hook. Absurd. <laughs> Dude, I felt bad for Kaiser. Kaiser was like playing Viego and was just like on the outskirts of the fight. Wasn't even the person looking to engage the fight. And he just got pulled in. He's just like, bro, I'm just trying to look for stragglers at this point. Why am I the first one in? Like, it Tango was said, insane. Nah. <laughs> Tango on hook champions was actually <laughs> just such a treat. Yeah, I, I, I'm very surprised Owen you were able to come away with two wins in a back to back with a substitute. They're in support. first place now. Yeah, they're in first place, and that's crazy. It's Good for them. Kind of insane. Shout yeah, out Owen kind you. Kind of Dude, insane. think about it. Uh, Our top two teams is Owen you and Purdue Northwest. Three and four last year, at least during the regular season, I think. Th right? th this is like the first time inside of MEC that we have not had either Ottawa or Grandview be the number one team. Mm -hmm. They've wow. always cool. been on top. Nobody's Good ever season. dethroned them. Good season so far. Yeah. I will say we did see last season some regular season slip ups for GVU. Yeah. They're well coached, they're down. But far from out, I think still high expectations for them. But this is a very competitive MEC season mm -hmm. between, yeah, wanna, between like, our top yeah. squads. I do just want to remind people that last year, Ottawa beat GVU, I think, both series last year. Yeah, because right? it was a double like, round robin, right? It was a double round robin. They beat them twice. And then GVU went to – proceeded to not drop a single game <laughs> in the playoffs. And they beat Ottawa twice, three zero. Yeah, right. Like, that's that's just like what GVU can do. And so, like, I know, like, the the thing is, like, oh, GVU is not that strong. They've got like a new top laner. He, he's role swapped, all that stuff, right? 
I I I don't I don't think they're dead until I see them out of the playoff. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we're like poking them. We're like, are they really? <laughs> Come no, on, no, get and then, up. And then it's like a get bear up. just comes out of hibernate. Like, yeah. Yeah. I don't. I. They're not I out. Don't, yeah. I, I don't. They're not dead until I see like them cremated. You know I, I, I mean? like, they're, they're not. not d- they're not gone until I see them get eliminated from playoffs. Exactly. And yeah. that's and that's double yeah. elim. So good luck. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they, they, could, they could easily come in and just like potentially beat Purdue Northwest on Friday. You know what I mean? Like. That's where I was gonna. That's where I was gonna go. Yeah, that was your segue. No, we've got. (laughs) Yeah, we've got some some crazy stuff. I do before we get into like the 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 next couple games. I do want to shout out some of the other stuff. Like, Briarcliff University is the most fun team to watch this season. (laughs) I would hard agree with that. Just like just like hands down. Yeah. If 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 somebody asks me. Do you what? What should I watch? Who should I watch in in MEC? I'm gonna say Briarcliff. I'm not gonna say Ottawa. I'm not gonna say Purdue you Northwest, talk- ONU. <laughs> I'm not gonna say them just because like they're really good teams. Mm-hmm. Briarcliff is a fun fucking team, man. Like you don't is, know what they're going to do. I don't know what they're gonna do. <laughs> jungle, like they're going Gwen Jungle. Mike is like playing with his balls out on the table like every match. Are you talking about the human highlight reel? The human highlight reel, like, I I only want to see Briarcliff win so I can get Mike on on the interview. <laughs> I can get Mike on the mic more, right? Cameron is playing like Tristana mid, APTF when ADTF is like the all the rage, yeah. right? They're going like, I, I mean, it's playing just, melee they're, Corky, they're, <laughs> like just running yeah. into people's faces, <laughs> melee on Corky. Oh. O- Olaf angle, and it was such a good Olaf angle, by the way, like into Zach. Amumu, Tristan, like you're not getting this Olaf off of you. Mike just Ooh. like, boom, just like goes crazy. Yeah, he's like, like Tom Cruise running into the back line. <laughs> just doesn't care. <laughs> yeah, I, I like. If you want to watch MEC games and you want to have fun, you want to like just watch <laughs> an entertaining team. Any of the Briarcliff games will give you some fun, right? Like yeah. high level yeah. stuff. Yeah, go watch ONU. Go watch Purdue. All that stuff. But like, I'm really. I'm here for fun really League of Legends. Like I like fun yeah, League of Legends. I, they, mm-hmm. they, they, it's fun watching them, and you can tell they have fun playing the game, right? Like, they're trying to just have fun. Also, the ideas um, that they come up with are actually really fun. Like, you see some of, like, the interesting drafts, and you brainstorm it, and you're like, wait a second, you're actually going to gap this guy. <laughs> you know, like, like, you're gapping this guy, and then it's just like, you have that, like, one thing that they don't do that you're like, ah, oh, this would have been the perfect if you just, like, had jungle gank mid more or something like that. And it's just like, ah, it's still fun. I still had a fun time. I enjoyed the journey at the very least. Yeah, I I was, I was thoroughly impressed. But we did, I think we had a match as well, kind of sneak under the radar. I'm not going to let you guys talk about it more. That Drury Ottawa series was actually pretty good, mm-hmm. I would say. It was, it was, I think it lost a lot. I think, I think it was, uh, had a lot of hype. Or, like, in my mind, I was, like, one of the series I really wanted to watch because these are two of the teams that are, like, kind of vying for, are mm-hmm. we a top team? Are we not a top team, right? The one who comes out on top here probably can say that we can contend in the top three, top four. And the other mm-hmm. one is just relegated the bottom eight, right? It's it's just <clears throat> the bottom four, sorry. Also had Riverside um, yeah, in play. Just, yeah, that was when I was surprised to see Riverside had come in. It's always a treat. Uh, but I do want to kind of let you guys talk about that because I think that series fell under the radar a little bit. I mean, it was just good, right? Mm-hmm. Like Mac, I don't know yeah. if did you, if you got a chance to to watch it. It was just a good series. I mean, it was it was quick. I will say, um, I think Ottawa had like a very good showcase of their talents. But mm-hmm. uh, game one with Jury always a banger. Uh, Jury has a curse with game two throughout most of the season, <laughs> where the game two is just I don't know what happens to them in game two. But uh, having mm-hmm. the youngest roster going against Ottawa and Taking on birthday boy Riverside in the mid lane. Yep, yep. <laughs> uh, we saw the return. I feel like last season as well, deep in the playoffs, Killian relied on that Kennen pick mm-hmm. quite a bit as uh, something kind of in his back pocket. So we saw that pop up again. Prod has been on an absolute tear. I feel like it don't matter who's in the mid lane at all. Prod's taking uh taking care of business. So it was it was real fun to watch. We have so many good Lee Sins. 
There's so <laughs> many, right? We have so many like fun, good Lee Sin. Lee like, Sin, Mike, Shin Zhao's. <laughs> Zin Zhao is not that exciting of a champion to me. Like, there's some cool stuff. No, when Julian plays on. it, Julian Zin Zhao is different, though. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be yeah. real. Like, yeah. I know, but Prod, Prod Lee Sin kind of just smacks, bro. Like, Prod Lee Sin is just like he is, he is seeing like five thousand years into the future with that champion, dude. It's kind of crazy. It, it is also weird too. He's like, he's like a Belbeth player too. Like that, right? That's like their main yeah. champion that they like to play. Mm -hmm. And people are like starting to ban out the Belbeth. He's like, I'm not going to that. I'm going to this other stuff. I'm going crazy, <laughs> baby. I, I he's know. a Graves too. Yeah, his yeah, Graves Prod is good is, too. Prod is, yeah, Prod is his Vi is, is, is a really cool jungle. I'm just surprised that Ottawa like slam dunked another jungler, right? Like I knew Trickster was gonna be good. <laughs> I knew he was going to be good because yeah, yeah, he played yeah. in, like, UPL and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. but, like, Prod coming in and just, like, yeah, I'm also a really good jungler. Like, I'm also – is he Trickster? I, that's, that's He's been growing. I will mm -hmm. I will say that. I do feel, feel like yeah. Prod is actually probably – in terms of, like, players, I think Prod is one of the players I would put in the conversation for – has grown the most inside the NEC. Like, week one to, like – Yeah, we, from one. week one mm -hmm. to now so far, I feel like Prod is – like there's a couple names I could probably throw into that that bucket, but Prod is definitely one of them that I would throw in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I just love like Riverside as well in game two. Fourth item, Mikhail's like just <laughs> uh, who cares? I'm he a, sold I'm everything for Mikhail's at one point in time. And in the interview, he turned around and said, "I'm going to walk out the base if you guys don't end the game with just Mikhail's." <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I love I, I love Ottawa. I think they're. I think, like you said, the the competition is a little bit harder, but I still mm -hmm. think like they're a team where you don't want to count out because Prod can just have a game, right? Prod mm -hmm. can just have a game and win it for you. Um, mm -hmm. Killian can just have a game and win it for you. Blonde or Riversided, right? Like Blonde will just take over games on like some of his mid picks where he's like picking LeBlanc or he's picking Draven mid into Seraphine, right? Like mm -hmm. it, it's it's Ottawa is scary because. Any any one of their players can just have an insane game and like it, it mm -hmm. they will carry right. I can't say the same for like GVU necessarily. I can't say the same necessarily necessarily for like Drury right. But mm -hmm. like Ottawa is in my mind one of those teams that just has really good individual players. Yeah. All right, Mac. I can right, see Chandy. it in your eyes. I can see it. You want to talk about the games that you get. I, this I Friday to and about Monday. So they were supposed to be mine! <laughs> <laughs> the SmackDown showdown that I've been waiting for finally arrived. You Is that might, what you're calling it? it, it what? Is that what you're going to uh, intro well, it is? TBD. You're going you're gonna to have a mic I'm gonna come write. down. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ban, ban Killian Rumble, by the way. Cornell, I'm, I'm just going to throw this out there real quick before. Cornell, what are we doing? Last last note before we move on. Real. Ben Killian's rumble. Yeah. <laughs> Why am I looking at Ottawa's Why? draft? Why do I see the champions and they have Smolder, Karma, and Rumble? How are they getting all three of those champions? Bro, I looked at that. Actually, I saw those three champions. I was like, dude, Shivy's, Shivy is going to be so mad when he has to talk about this. <laughs> like, He's just going to be like, how do you give all of this over? Why do you just give them a Zodia? Don't, <laughs> don't think I've, Cornell, don't think I forgot. Your beatings are coming. Like, your lashings are here, dude. Like, you're giving karma over as well? Like, what? <laughs> What are I've we got doing? the tally. I still, I've been doing the tally for you, Shibi. In me? here, yeah, oh, yeah, I'm at yeah. six. I'm at six now for Karma, and surprisingly two for Killian Drumble. I hope <laughs> I don't have to add to that one anymore. You, you know what would be crazy if the Killian Rumble count is even close <laughs> to the Karma count? Like if it's like one or two. Like what are we doing? Yeah. Why are we dancing Killian Rumble? Yeah. Like it's so silly. It's so silly. It's so. It's so silly. Yeah, giving Exodia over <laughs> in game one. It's like Cornell wanted to feel the wrath of like God's touch. And like they got it, man. They got it. That's what uh, that that's what yeah, a 999 that was... feels like, baby. Like that. Oh. Yeah. But anyway, Anyways. that's 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 a good note, I think, to end we week it. number yeah, three end. on. That's that's I think the week three synopsis. Uh for week four, there's only five games. In mm -hmm. in Shibby, you better buckle in. 
my guy, because we I'll are all of them. We are loaded in. I think it's our first <laughs> double header on both Friday and Monday. And uh, Friday, mark your calendars, everybody. I know Shivy was talking about you got to watch Briarcliff. Mark your calendars for Friday night, 6 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Central. It's it's the match I think both players uh, on these squads have been looking forward to all season long. It, it's Grandview versus Purdue Northwest. And then on Monday, we've got Ohio Northern versus Ottawa at 8 p.m. Eastern, depending on when Briarcliff versus Cornell ends up. So two... I know sometimes we've been strapped for, like, which match here is the match of the week. Now we have two that are really close for which one's going to be match of the yeah. week. Um, yeah, let's get into Grandview versus Purdue Northwest first quickly, and then Ohio it, Northern versus Ottawa. It's crazy, too, because if either of the either Grandview or Ottawa win these matches— Who's the best team in MEC? Like, there's a, <laughs> there's a legitimate argument to be like, I don't know who the best team in MEC is, right? Mm -hmm. Like, the expectation is that Purdue just, like, wins both games, right? They have a doubleheader similar to what ONU d are doing. They're playing yep. Grandview into Cleveland State. I th like I, Regardless of outcome of set one, I, I realistically think Purdue should just win the Cleveland State game. Um, mm hmm I, I'm gonna say this: There are like three really good games too, because Saturday, Travis, oh, yeah. Travis and Mex game, they got Drury and BC. That's right? a gonna be a banger. That's a, that's a banger. Go either way. That's a that's banger. A mid table slam, bro. That's a mid table slam. Like that. These that, are two teams fun. getting their stuff together. Those are actually like two yep. teams that are in the middle of yep. like getting everything figured out for themselves. I'm actually very excited for that. You guys can't take away all the bangers from me, okay? <laughs> I lost too much. <laughs> That's a five six matchup. Like that five six matchup is sick, right? Like I love, mm -hmm. I love mm -hmm. that. That's a that's a that's gonna be a slobber knocker. Like that's not gonna be, it's not gonna be clean. It's not gonna be fun. It's, sure. it's gonna be it's gonna be two pigs wrestling. Not gonna be here, dude. I'm I'm right. I'm in the pig pan with them, dude. I, I'm that. That's where I'm at. I'm in the yeah, mud. That, that's good old. Re <laughs> that's good old like mud wrestling. I got my. I'm gonna have. Right I'm gonna wear overalls to that match. <laughs> dude, like. You if, 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 if whatever happenstance, Drury versus Briarcliff becomes like the cleanest macro game, I'll eat my words. Don't get me wrong, but I, yeah. I'll be patiently watching and looking at how much of a like a haymaker slugfest this game is. These mm -hmm. this series is gonna be, but yeah, GVU Purdue. Um, like we said, I I will never count out Grandview. I've seen them just drop games in the regular season and come into the mm -hmm. playoffs just killer mentality. Purdue has more to lose necessarily, <laughs> right? Because I mean, see, they're they're, they're yeah. a very confident team, and rightfully so, huh? right? Rightfully so. Um, Does Purdue have more to lose? From I a standings so. perspective, GVU with two losses is kind of tough. Oh no! Yeah, yeah. I guess what? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, for sure in terms right. of like standings, but I think Purdue Northwest in terms of just like how they've been. I'm not gonna say cocky because like they. It, it's confident how confident they've been and just uh when you talk to their players right when you talk to Klexo, when you talk to doubtful like i can tell they they think they're the best and that's that's fair i don't disagree with it um and and so like i feel like purdue if they lose this it, it might like knock them down a peg and i think grandview mm -hmm. kind of like you said mac kind of really needs this win they don't they're be seated they low can't. They're be seated lower yeah. than ONU at this rate because think about it. ONU only has two more games to play, uh, though they are tough. It's Ottawa and PNW. They are tough, but if but you, winnable. If you think about it in terms of seeding, right? You could realistically, as GVU, if you flounder at the very end here, you could find yourself having to go against like Purdue or Ohio very early on inside of the upper bracket. And those are two teams that if you lose here then you're going against a rematch of teams that are giving you your only losses. That's actually really yeah. rough if you're Grandview. What's yeah. what's some tea is we really only have two weeks left mm -hmm. of regular season action, which is crazy. I'm just noticing. Yeah. And then we have playoffs. I think playoffs starting Monday, March 4th. Monday, March 4th. They literally start mm -hmm. after week five regular season ends. It's just a playoff wow. match. Yeah, it's Monday. Yeah. That Monday, you guys have a playoff match. Um, and then uh, 
Dang, are all the matches going forward on Mondays and Fridays? I'm not going to be casting until the land. Hello? <laughs> Uh, uh, they're probably gonna. There's no way. They're. they're that, I don't think the schedule is correct. I don't think the schedule is correct. <laughs> no. There's no way unless it is. But if it is, it, it's a lot there's of Mondays no and hosting, Fridays. Unless they're doing like a double stream where like it's us on one playoff match and Travi and Mech mm -hmm. on another playoff match, I could see that potentially. Maybe. Maybe. Um, they do have multiple right. channels from their time doing like NACL, the Proving Grounds, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So who knows? Don't. Don't fucking do that, Unified. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Like, don't. I want us. Like, there's eight teams. Like, like, we. I'm pretty sure we can just see every single playoff match. I think that's okay. I don't think we need to run two simultaneous streams on one day, uh, because especially if like, no offense, if we have like a Cornell CSU or something like that versus I don't know GVU, Purdue or something, we already know what viewers are gonna gravitate towards. So just double like give, elim bracket? Oh, I guess it is. Okay. okay. Get, give yeah, it's everybody double the ability to be okay. streamed uh, on with without any um, distractions or without any other games going on. But yeah, two yeah. weeks of regular season play. Week five uh, is looking pretty cool as well. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's a match where I will be pa patiently watching Purdue Northwest versus ONU. Right. Week five, we get mm -hmm. the top in theory the top two teams as of right now. You know, bashing heads. Um, and then we also get like the, the, I don't want to call it El Clasico, <laughs> but it is kind of El Clasico, like the Ottawa versus Grandview. Like that's a, that's just like a match, right? That's a, that's a match. That's, week five. Yeah. 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 That's a fun, that's always, those two teams hate each other. Like I already, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> they, they don't like each other. Um, but yeah, I think week four, um, I'm, I'm like kind of glad that we get some of those top table matchups. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. you know what? Travi and Mech, I, I wish I had sympathy, but you had so many solid match. Like, you had so many good matches. I wish, no, I wish, like, no, it's good. It's good. It's good. I, I, I've honestly, it's been so funny, too, because it's been like Mech's missed out. Uh, So if you say Travis and Mech, Mech has actually missed out on every banger we've had. So every time we've had like an oh, insane matchup of huge implications, Mech's been away. So I've had like uh, I had orbital mm -hmm. this past Sunday, so it's just been funny. I tease him about it, where I'm just like, "Dude, where were you? Like, <laughs> you missed this." And he's like, "What? What? What's happening when I come back?" And I'm like, "Bro, this is this is what you miss. You go away, and all the kid, all the 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 kids in college, they come out to play, bro." <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh man! All right, before before we uh we head on off, I know we're getting ready to wrap things up. We kind of talked about everything that's heading into everything. Uh, I mm -hmm. just want to real quick ask you guys a quick question because I did ask some of the players beforehand when we did MEC Pod, and it's a little bit longer of an episode. Uh, sure. Do you guys have anything exciting coming up in the new patch that you're really excited for coming into competitive, possibly? The newest patch, 14.4? Yeah. The it hasn't dropped. It hasn't dropped right? yet. No, no, no. But they've been releasing like some of the the things that are happening inside of it. Like we've seen that Vola Bear has been getting buffs and stuff like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm 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 excited for that for the Vola Bear stuff because I I think I saved it on my phone on Iran. Like I'm like. Are you talking about the drain tank build? Is that what you're looking at? Uh, is it the one that? Oh my god, I think Molecule or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's like yeah, Ingenious yeah, 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 yeah. Hunter plus like um. Yes. I've been wanting to try that. Same. Build. It's unending despair, <laughs> frozen heart. I think thimble winner. This is yeah, thimble winner, and it just works off of you having so much ingenious hunter cooldown that those items just are constantly ticking off. Mm -hmm. I'm excited oh my for God. that. <laughs> I want to see volley bear top. Um, Eliza showed it to the... us before buffs. Uh, <laughs> not yeah. that's not yeah. advisable right now, but. <laughs> Yeah, I think Volley Bear is going to be cool. I, 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 I like Volley Bear because I think that champion is fun to watch being executed in, 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 in games. In right? coordinated like, games. Yeah, because I, like people will say, like, oh, it, make, it makes tower dives easy. It does this, it does that. But now there's the game you have to play against Volley Bear. Like, who's he going to dive? Where are you going to do? You have to, your wave management has to be so much better when, you're, when there's a Volley Bear on the enemy team. Because he can just come in level 6, dive you, and you're dead. Right? Yeah. He turns off the turret. I know the turret turnoff is getting, a, I think, nerfed, right? It is. Three to five it, to two it, to four seconds. Yeah, yeah. It's like a couple. It's like a second or two off. It's like a second off, but like that's still so good, yeah. right? That's still so good. Um, but yeah, I I am excited for the 
that the Lulu changes are interesting um, because Zeri just got buffed and now they're buffing Lulu and Mac is probably going to take a gun to his head if he sees those two <laughs> champions. Like, I, I'm serious. Like... Mac hates those. <laughs> Mac Dewey is gonna turn in the clock. Dewey. Don't 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 get it twisted. Back in the day, my Jana was nice, so I get where some of the Enchanter players are coming from. I don't like it. They're just kind of tough to cast in early game bot lane. It's just yeah, going I, like I don't it's, anyway. It's, it's just cool. I mean, it's, it's not cool. It's interesting <laughs> that, like, a bunch of... It's not cool. You're right, <laughs> Shibby. Cool. It's not Lulu, cool at all. Soraka getting buffed? Like, why is Soraka <laughs> getting buffed? I don't like that. Oh, goodness. Um, um, and they're nerfing, they're nerfing my boy Bard a little bit. Like, I know. Ugh. I'm reading the patch notes now for the uh, first time. Uh-huh. Um, I, spr I sprung. I sprung the surprise. I don't think. On you. I don't think. I don't think we'll see anything too crazy. I. I. I think the only one that I'm actually really excited for is the Volibear, Bear, uh, just because mm -hmm. of the new build that has been brought to my attention. I'm like, yeah. oh, that's just really cool and a very uh, ingenious idea. But uh, uh, uh yeah, I got you. Yeah. Stop it. Uh, and I, you know, I'm excited for somebody to make the game unbearable for somebody else. So, you know. Anyways, Black Cleaver buffs look cool. Black Cleaver buffs, buffs cool. they're looking pretty cool. I mean, could you use some more tank busters when you start buffing up tanks? Well, it's the armor shred now goes from what? It's like it used to take six hits and you get the full 24% armor shred to now it's, I think with the new buff, it's 25% armor shred with five hits. One, one less hit for 1% more armor shred and just getting that like armor shred is so nice, right? Because mm -hmm. in a team fight or even, I guess, in lane, how many hits are you realistically going to get? Like, that—that that is actually, like, a, a sneaky good buff. I think Black Cleaver, we're going to see a lot more Black Cleaver. I don't think we're going to see League of Black Cleaver like we did a long time ago, but... Uh, Back in the good old days. <laughs> Back in my old when, Black, when Black Cleaver was silver, like, what? <laughs> wasn't, wasn't actually a Black Cleaver. Um, yeah. 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 I, think, I think that's a sneaky good buff. And I... It, this is the issue, and I think we've seen it all the time, is that a lot of pros will probably be slow to actually build Black Cleaver, even though it's really good or pretty good now. Um, it's going to take, like, someone from Korea or someone from China to, like, build Black Cleaver, the new one, on, like, a crazy champion. On like, Zeri. You know, Rock, on yeah, or something, like, some, <laughs> something weird like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something really weird like that, and then we'll see, like, Oh wait, Black Cleaver is insane. It's twenty five percent shred and five hits. And Lucian like, yeah, mids so back, similar. baby. Blade the Ruin yeah. King, Black Cleaver. Woo! Yeah, it's 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 yeah. I think it's way. I think people are like really not looking at this change. Oh, lethal tempo changes are nice. Um, oh, that's true. Early lethal tempo was kind of crazy on some champions. Uh, ones that come to mind, Irelia, Jax, those mm -hmm. kind of champions. Like early lethal tempo was crazy. Um, it's also a big nerf to the range champions that used lethal tempo as well. Yeah, yeah, like the. I, I mean, I'm I'm not too upset about that because the the I I see that and I'm like, all right, you know what? If anything, this makes the top laners that play ranged top laners with lethal tempo a little less cringe. They're still cringe, but there's a little bit less, right? That lethal tempo is so annoying. Dude, there's nothing that makes me more mad than when I queue up top lane, I go <laughs> in, I pick my champion, I look over at the other team, they pick Vayne, or they pick Akshan. I'm like, dude, get away from me. Don't talk to me, ever. I don't want to associate with this player. I don't even want to be in the same all chat as them, dude. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah, I've never played Bane top before. <laughs> That's a cringe pick. <laughs> you know what? I, I when I got auto filled top, I I'm gonna I'm just gonna hurt you guys. I know. I was playing like the Jana Karma top, that kind of stuff. I just like did not want to interact with you. I was playing Lissandra, Lulu. Oh, Lissandra. Remember Lulu AD top? Lulu AD top's kind of sick. Maybe when they were Roa. <laughs> and then I remember Fizz, old Fizz with Tripod. Oh, yeah, I played Fizz. Blade. I played Frozen Fizz heart. top. I played Fizz that was, top. That was fun. That was, yeah, I was doing that stuff. I was never, I will say I this, was, so I actually know when that was because I played at a LAN at UNC Charlotte and picked <laughs> that and just, 
Oh, you just rolled them, right? I just rolled because nobody played top back then. So I was like plat in top, and everyone else was like gold or silver. And I would play you, you this just rolled top. Them Bro. Those broken champions. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. Was, it, was, it was Triforce, <laughs> Frozen Heart, Bork into Zhonya's. Your yeah. E cooldown was so crazy on that Done. character. I, I used to do. um <sighs> uh, uh, Good stuff. Good stuff. Back when I used to like play and like Team Liquid used to do their like fan Discord things, I used to jump in and play with them every now and then. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I got infamous for a zillion top lane. So I would just roll up with like press the attack zillion top lane. <laughs> People just throw the pocket me. sand on him. Just throw the pocket sand at him. I, there was one guy who played set into me, and he didn't realize it was Zillion top. Every time he tried to run at me, I'd slow him, just cogwheel him to death. Oh, yeah. I was Get like, with the Dio. My, my build was like Nasher's Tooth Ooh. in the Dead Man's Play. It was. <laughs> what? Yeah. Dude, it's, it's yeah. I, I will say this, though. I was not a tank echo abuser. Though you Those guys? Those guys are a different breed. Be, different breed. They deserve to be jailed. Jail. Jailed. Whoever they may be. You don't, you don't, you don't know where to find me. <laughs> Unfortunately for you, I do. Frostborn? Like Frostborn? Yeah, what dude, is this you're character, sick. Dude? Dude, what is he, he, You would get him low. He would all in like 75% of his HP back. When it's like 4,000. He's just bonking you. I was like, this champion is dumb. Like, dude. I don't get yeah. Uh, oh. Anyways, enough. There's a lot of reminiscing that yeah. happened. A lot of yeah. nostalgia. We've gone on. Episode. MEC, episode three, nostalgia. The boys, <laughs> the old the old boys. We're, we're just, back we're, to the glory days. We're, we're, we're just a bunch of oldies, you know. <laughs> but, hey, that's it for us. We had an extra long one kind of making up for lost time from MEC pod True. not going in last time. So, hope you enjoyed. Uh, we'll be seeing you this coming up week, Friday at 5 p.m. Central Time. Mac and Shibby will be starting off our weekend of banger after banger after banger after banger. So make sure y'all tune in for that. We'll, we'll catch y'all there. And uh, yeah, have a have a good night. Bye.